Well, hello again there, Astro Patio friends and followers, and anybody new might be coming to my channel. This is part two of my Lunt LS60MT uh, modular telescope video. Now, the first video was H alpha photography and viewing, and this one is going to be on white light how to configure the MT for white light. Now let's go over the parts that uh, were there for H alpha. You've got the B1200 blocking filter. You've got the uh, Lunt H alpha uh, tuning uh, system uh, that's in, in the scope to use for H alpha. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it apart and configure it for white light viewing. Now for white light viewing you don't need the B1200 blocking filter or the H alpha tuning section. So we're going to take those off and uh, then we'll configure it for white light. So we'll go ahead and take out the uh, B B1200 blocking filter and we will put the caps in place on those so they don't get dust and everything on them and of course the caps already on that portion but this this just slides right on there and you can put it back in your case now we don't need the H alpha tuning so we will set this up right like this to take this apart what we have to do is there are six grub screws three here and three down here so we will get the uh, provided uh, Allen wrench that came with the system and then we will undo the Allen wrench grub screws on the top of the H alpha portion and they just loosen up and there's like I say there's three of them there's one back here and then there's one over here never mind this this is my uh, EAF for my focusing you saw the video I made of the adapter so I can add it to the scope. The third grub screw is right back here. And once they're loosened, then this will just pull straight up and out. All right. Now they provide a cover for this side of the H alpha filter. Now the cover has got a flat on it. And I guess that uh, you use the flat where the uh, tuning knob is to make sure it fits. Now actually it, it, there's clearance all the way around so I'm not sure. So you tighten those back down to lock it in place. And then down on the black ring of the telescope there's three more grub screws so we unloosen those. And the H alpha compartment pulls straight up and this is what it looks like whenever it's out of the out there's a filter on that side and then there's a cap to go to cover this end all right and that can go back into your case for safekeeping now the system the system I bought came and I'm sure I think all the systems the MT systems come with them also I'm not sure about that but I, but this one did there's six thumb screws to replace the grub screws with if you want to for easy take apart and put back together the next time you wanted to rearrange reconfigure it for the different uh, uses I'm going to take the three grub screws out of the telescope portion and replace them with the thumb screws. They're a little bitty so you can lose them real easy. Now one thing these grub screws can screw all the way in and you screw them all the way in they can actually drop down onto the glass and onto the lens inside the telescope so you want to make sure you back them out and not push them through so you don't scratch anything. So then you take, take the thumb screws that they provided, and there's six of them, and you put those in place of the grub screws. 
You don't have to do this, but this is an option. And I'm going to go ahead and do it this way, just for ease. All right, now you, you just take the focuser and put it back in place. Well, for me, because I, since I'm not using the four inch dovetail that came originally with the telescope, I bought a longer dovetail so I could have more balance, uh, room to balance the telescope with in my mount. Uh, because the locking screw on the focuser gets in the way and it won't sit down. So I'm going to have to take that locking screw out. And one thing about taking the locking screw out is since I have the electronic focuser, it, the focusing shouldn't move as much as it would uh, without it because it's pretty sturdy whenever it stays in place pretty good because it just got the extra weight on it. And that just drops back down into place. Want to make sure you're kind of even with the dovetail. And then lock it down. Like so. And then you could take the other three uh, grub screws out of the H alpha portion if you like, and also put the uh, uh, thumb screws into it. Now, on the H alpha portion of the scope, I'm going to not use the thumb screws. I'm just going to allow the uh, grub screws to stay in place because I think that maybe the grub screws, if it's uh, the thumb screws, that if it's bouncing around in the case and wiggling around, they may unloosen just because of they rub on something where the grub screws are in there. There's nothing to loosen them up with. So just for my purposes, personal preference, I'm going to leave the thumb screws out of the H alpha. Right. And then I'm going to put the, th the grub screws that I took out of the telescope and put them in the bag with, that came with the system with the other three uh, thumb screws. And then the focusing, locking focus, I'm going to put in there. Now, you'll be able to tell them apart because the locking, locking focuser has got a, a longer thread on it than the... Uh, uh, the thumb screws for the telescope and there we have the telescope the scope came the package I got came with what they call the Herschel wedge now the Herschel wedge is is uh, the white light basically it's the white light filter that blocks off blocks out all the harmful rays of the Sun so you can see the surface of the sun. And that's all it's for, is looking at the surface of the sun. But it's great for viewing those sunspots, just the sunspots on the surface. You don't get no textures like you do with the H-alpha. But I think it's pretty neat just to be able to see the actual size of the sunspots. Uh, I mean, you can make out where the sunspots are in the H-alpha, but this gives you a true definition of the actual sunspots. So in order to use this, you have to use the two inch to a one and a quarter uh, adapter that they provided and the, adap and the adapter just slides in where you took the B1200 blocking filter out. So you lock it down and then the, the wedge just goes into the eyepiece and you lock it down and now we're ready for the white light viewing using this telescope. Of course you can either use an eyepiece visually or you can uh, put a camera in here and take your pictures just like you would any other time. So we'll play with it and we'll get some pictures of the sun in white light and I will put those on the end of this video. Now remember if you like what I do and you find uh, my videos are interesting and informative please like them and if you think that you want to follow me uh, subscribe and you'll get notifications of all any and all new stuff that I put on my channel. Anyway, let's see what we got. Here's a still image in H alpha just to remind you of what it looks like. Now as we switch over to the white light of the viewing, you see that uh, there's no prominences or anything coming off the edges of the sun. No matter how much overexposing you do, you'll never get the prominences or flares coming off the edge of the screen. All you'll do is end up washing the sponge spots out too much that they won't even show anymore. The sun spots, as you see, they are 
two shades in each of the suns most of each of the sunspots there's a dark center which and then there is a lighter gray area that's also part of the sunspot and here we have the stacked image of the video as you can see everything is a little more defined and there's better lines in it and you can see quite a bit more than the video once they're stacked but that's the difference between a stacked image and a video image you get a little more detail